The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 3rd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we can check out that we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Please send that early and send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got nearly all the US indices trading to the downside. The one that is not as a trend is up by about two tenths of a cent or 28 points. Dow's off 95, S&P 14, NASDAQ's down 24, Russell's down nine, semi's off 33, gold's off two, silver's off 13 cents. To the upside, you've got lights recruit up a buck 35, natural gas up eight cents, the 30 year treasury down nearly two points, trading out at 120.15. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. We've got Mercado Libre up $121. That's a 10% move. Regenerative Pharmaceuticals, $45 move to the upside or 6%. Fair Isaac Corp, 3.5% or 28 bucks. Clorox up 15 bucks and Wayfair up 14 and change as well. To the downside, leading the charge is Booking Holdings off 79 bucks, nearly 3%. HubSpot, 48 bucks, 9%. Equinix, 43 bucks, 5% plus. Westco International, 19% or 33 buckaroonies and coming zinc down 24 bucks. That is a 9% move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. What do you want to look at? Well, I'm going to provide to you what I believe is the barrier for the market in moving higher, that if crossed, we should then get a rally today. So let's get right to it, Stevie. Let's go ahead and move our charts over to the other panel, and we're going to take a look at those 120-minute time frame charts for each of the equity future contracts. It's a beautiful thing, so to speak, and the beautiful thing is look at that oscillator and change line. Every rally has run into resistance if price has been able to get up to those levels. Those oscillator and change lines are the key areas that the market must overcome in order to, success, in order to suggest that there will be any kind of sustained rally. So let's take a look at the ES Mini, upper left-hand side. What do we know about it? We know that at 45.25 right now, and that number is going to move up and down as price moves up and down, but it is that oscillator and change, which I teach people how to uh, develop or use. Uh, you should want to learn that. Uh, just subscribe to Master probability if you do it for 30 days it doesn't cost you anything and you're going to get that uh, uh, understand that tool really key tool out here so dan was talking about thinks that the es mini is going to get green but if it does dan what price needs to do it needs to close above that and sustain itself above that red oscillator and change line now if in fact the ES Mini is able to do that, it will then have other battles ahead. And those other battles are up at 4532 and 4543. Is there a bottom pattern inside the 120 minute NQ out here? Not that I have. I know that we can do the wave counts. So I guess it's at uh, uh, letter G out here. Um, so we'll go with that at this stage of the game. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ right now, and trading sideways over the last uh, 
12 hours plus 14, 16 hours, 20 hours really. Um, the price is right now starting to trade above that level. Now this bar, it's a two hour bar, and that's kind of the bummer here because you really don't know until the bar comes to a close. This bar doesn't close until 12 noon, and then you'd have 2 p.m. And I will say that all four of these equity future contracts must trade above that line, close above that line, in order for there to be any kind of sustained rally. At least as I've gone through the charts, one of my objectives when I do this show with you is to show you the most pertinent information as I scan through my charts and identify where are the real key levels of support or resistance, because that's really what is so important about this game, short of is the uh, is the instrument we're looking at making a top or a bottom. Those really the the four things that I uh, provide for you. So watch those oscillator and change line. The N or the NQ is giving us a hint of a suggestion that it wants to do that. But these are the key levels. By the way, inside the YM right now, that's printed at 35. 361 inside the Russell, it's at 1971. Again, those numbers are subject to change. Now, let's go from here and do a little bit deeper dive. And to do that deeper dive, let's go take a look at some more of those intraday charts out here, see what kind of pattern signals we have. Now, the reason that we want to do that specifically is because the ES Mini, as we saw, uh, was trading at support. Now, support is the bottom of its daily profile. That daily profile is calculated right now two different ways, even though it's using the same data. For example, on the black background charts, we'll shoot, I'll just switch over there. We'll just do the old switcheroonie out here. I think I showed this to you, but if I didn't, I most certainly want to. And uh, here, if we take a look at the ES Mini, the upper panel, upper left-hand panel, you will see that price is back at a support level here. These are the profile levels calculated by the uh, eSignal TAS system. It shows a support zone between 4507 and 4524. Wait, Steve-O, you just showed me a different profile on that white background chart. I did. Doesn't that just confuse the all the heck out of you? No, it doesn't. It's an additional piece of information that you and I will be able to use. So don't think of it as confusing. Think of it as thank you. You just gave us additional piece of information. What do you mean, Stevie? I mean, if price closed below 4507, certainly does that for two consecutive sessions, well, then we know what the next price target to the downside would be. After that, we're going to switch back to the white background charts. Here we'll see that the uh, Ninja Trader system, again, using the same data, is calculated a different profile. That different profile on a daily basis comes down at the 4456 level. So here's the deal. The deal is, on the ES Mini, price has got to close above that 120-minute red oscillator and change line. Currently printed at 45.25. We know that number is going to change slightly. We also know that the ES Mini, on the black background charts, is sitting at support. And so we're taking a look at these white background charts here on the intraday time periods, looking for bottoming patterns. If there's going to be a turn in a market, it's going to first take place in those intraday charts. For example, we've got a 10 minute, 15, 30 and 60. As we take a look at the entire bottom row out here, and this is one of the things that has the hair on Dan's neck standing up why he believes that the ES Mini will turn green is each of those have bottoming patterns. Now, what they need to do is they must take out resistance levels. Where are those resistance levels? Well, let's go with the hardest one to take out, and that's going to be at 4531. At 4531 is the top of the slightly bearish structured 60 minute profile. So we've got 4531 there, and we've got 4525 right now as the red oscillator and change on the two hour time frame chart. Let's just make it easy. You get a close about 4531, the market will continue its rally, at least the ES Mini. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So, you know, I put those black background charts up on my screen, daily time frames. We know that the ES Mini right now is just consolidating with inside profile, as is the uh, Russell 2000, as is the Dow Equity Future contract. The only one that is not is the NQ. And so that's where we're going to take. And so the NQ is basically the weak link out here. And so now we're taking a look at the NQ. Now, what I put up here is an ultra short term time frame, if you will. And that's the 15 minute time frame. And when I asked people inside the den, so I posted this, so if you were on Tiger TV, you, were, you could see this chart, at least during the last minute or so of that uh, breakout there. My question was, what's the 15-minute NQ chart telling us? Now, what I have on this chart, I don't show this chart that often. I show it when it's pertinent. And what this chart is showing us, the green and red horizontal lines are TD9 count breakdown. The breakdown levels would be the green lines. The breakout levels would be the red lines out there. Red line being support, green line being resistance here. Now, why is this important? Well, if you take a look, it's from the top that was formed out here. When I say a top, uh, so this is showing us, again, the TD9 counts. So if we take a look at a TD9 count breakdown resistance level, we've got one at 15,904. That took place right back here at about 7.30 in the uh, 12, 7.30 in the evening back on July the 30th. The interesting thing here is take a look at this rally that unfolded at 10 o'clock in the morning on July 31st. Where did price run into resistance? That TD9 count breakdown level was not able to take it out. The next team now can't break out level. You can see here, uh, each of them are tested and rejected with one exception. And the one exception lasted for about um, an hour. And that was right here at 15,700. We had a close above it. That was at 715 in the morning. That lasted until about uh, 830. So about an hour and 15 minutes. What the ES Mini did this morning, if we take a look at it on a 15 minute basis, this formed a TD9 count bottom, it, uh, gen or a TD9, and it generated a, a TD9 count breakout level. And that was at 15, 358.75. Price pulled back this morning, wasn't able to bust that out. You know, the expression Tom has shared with us, he's taught to us, if you can't bust them down, you try to bust them up. Well, that's exactly what has taken place, or what did take place here on the 15 minute chart for the NQ. 
Well, the bust them up out here was getting to the TD nine count breakdown resistance level. Remember, ever since July 30th, we've only seen a close above a TD nine count breakdown level for an hour and 15 minutes. We are clearly above that level right now. This is giving us a hint that at least on this time frame, we are seeing a change in trend. So now let's go take a look at the other NQ charts out here. And again, this is all taking a look at the intraday time periods. So we've covered the basically we've covered the 10 minute. It's doing the same thing that the 15 minute is. So where's the next resistance area? Pretty clear. It's the 30 minute level, 1550750. Again, a TD nine count breakdown area. Uh, for the NQ. If price can overcome that, that's at 15,507, we may see it close above the top of that NQ profile for its 120 minute time frame chart. And that's up at the 15,491 level. So 15,491 is a real key area, and 15,507 will make that the more important level, 15,507 inside the NQ out here. So that's what we have going on there. Let's not stop here. Let's just do one more. Let's take a look at the Dow because the Dow was also testing uh, profile support this morning. And if a bottom is going to form, at least a, let's call it at least a two-day rally type bottom out there, we should see signals on the intraday time periods here. So here again, we're just waiting for these charts to populate. I've got a few things running in the background as you can imagine. And so we're getting this uh, charts here to populate. So uh, we can see right now, or I can see visually, I can see roads momentum indicators signals on the 10, 15, 30 minute time frame charts here for the Dow equity future contract. And uh, so now, and also on the 60 minute. Well, the 60 minute is underway right now. Uh, but assuming that at 12 noon, we still have a bullish reversal candle, it too would confirm that type of a bottom. So where's the key resistance area? Excellent question. It's still going to be the red oscillator and change on, on that 120-minute uh, chart. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. That's really the most important number. I could first tell you it would be 35,357, and I just told you that. And that's the top of the 60-minute uh, uh, profile. But that's really not the area that's going to be important. It's going to be 35,370 or thereabouts. Now, that number is going to go higher as price moves higher. So what do we want to call it? Mm, great question. I For... For our purposes right now, I'd have to call it 35403, which is the bottom of that 120-minute uh, profile. So right now inside the Dow Equity Future contract, we just have a counter trend move that's going on. I believe that the counter trend moves turn into something more than a counter trend or a, a counter trend that lasts for a while, again, perhaps two days out there, if we get all four equity future contracts to close above the 120-minute charts, uh, oscillator, unchanged line levels out there. So that's a brief, maybe more than a brief review of where we're at inside the equity markets out there. Let's get to the only question that has come in so far. Of course, I would love more 877-927-6648, any kind of uh, private message or regular public message inside the den would work and uh, by email at steve at tfnn.com okay hector i see that you have uh, sent in a request as well so let's get to the first request coming from peak g inside the tiger's den and peak's question was and is i'm going to change charts for this uh where are the uh, where's the 30-year treasury and the 10-year note headed to so here whoops shoot i didn't mean to do that i meant to do this we're going to change those black background charts here momentarily. It just shows the A to B equals CD pattern uh, that's in place for the 30-year. So let's move over to that. I'll just switch to – and we'll just switch right here. I'll just simply expand this chart. So here's the September contract. Eh, it's not even the September contract. I've got that uh, – let me do this here. Let me come up here. I want to just put in the September contract, <coughs> U23. Just make sure there's no funny shenanigans because what I was using was my synthetic uh, symbol out there, which stitches together the futures contract. Just want to make sure no no funny games out here. So we got our A point, the high from April the 6th. Our B point is going to be the low from May 26th, and it makes a rally into June 1st. It was about a 46% rally. So you can see the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern inside of the 30-year Treasury peak. If this level – now what's required here in order for this to bottom – in order for rates to top, would be for a bullish reversal candle to form. 
So that's the first thing that we'd be looking for. Short of that, price may do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. The next price projection level, you were asking where might price head to, that would turn out to be 117.93. Now let's put up the note out here, the 10-year note. Let's do kind of a similar thing, although it doesn't, to my recollection, does not have an A to B equals, well it does, I take that back. It has an A to B equals CD down pattern. That was formed and tested back here on July 6th. That swing point is also being tested. Now, what happens if price closes below this level? Well, there's a couple different things. One, the larger A to B equals CD would give you a price projection of 108.80. The smaller A to B equals CD, let's go draw that in. In essence here, the smaller one, you would start with your A point being, or you could start with your A point being the high from June 1st, what we used for the C point. And the low is going to be that low from July 6th, and the high looks like it's the high that came in on July 18th. That would give us a one-to-one -one down at about 108.41. So this 110.13 level is a real key area to be watching observing peak G uh, in the 10-year note. When we get back to this break, we'll switch over to those white background charts. I'll show you what's going on there with regard to the 30-year bond at a 10-year note. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow down 41, S&P's off 7, NASDAQ wanted up 8, the trainings are up 81, Russell's off 6, semis are down 16. Uh, let's go take a look at those 30-year Treasury uh, charts out there. My apologies, I'm in the wrong spot. We'll pull those up here. You know what we're going to do for that? We're going to look at the multi time frame set of charts out here. So we know that uh, price has made a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. And so when you get to an area where you could see a bottom, what you do is you look to those intraday charts, right? Right. Look at the intraday chart, see what kind of signals they're providing us. So along the bottom panel here, we've got 10, 15, 30, and 60. You can see that each of those have or are generating Rhodes momentum indicator bottom patterns out here. So the first step has taken place. On a two-hour time frame and a four-hour time frame, we have bar number eight that is in the process of completing. So there could be a TD9 count bottom on a 240-minute chart. That wouldn't take place until uh 4 p.m this afternoon so that's a possibility and on the two hour time frame chart that could take place by well by four you could have the pattern complete by four but by two you would know out here so the five hour chart it shows that we have a wave number seven that's going to extend itself so with the 30-year treasury making the one-to-one -one move out here peak um what we are taking a look at is it's a it is attempting to form a bottom well, Stevie, can you do that 15-minute magic you did for us on the uh, NQ out there? Well, if we did that, we'd be taking a look at this chart out here. And on this chart, what this shows, that the 30-year uh, Treasury needs to close above to suggest, even for a 15-minute time frame, that there's some type of change in trend would be a close above 121.10. If it did that, 121.23 would be the number. So there's a possibility of a, of a bottom that is, well, we know that the bottom is attempting to form. The daily still needs that bullish reversal candle. But I would watch those intraday charts out there. Now, that's what's going on on the 30-year. If we take a look at the 10-year note, this is going to take a few moments here to populate. Uh, but that's okay. We know that the 10-year note was testing a prior swing low that had generated a buy the D point pattern. We know that it generated a buy the D point pattern because it formed a three uh, because it formed a, a bullish engulfing candle at that one to one A to B equals C D. Now. What's really key here is can price hold support? Turns out that support on the 10-year note for the September contract is really going to be down at 110.09. We're at 110.12 as we speak right now. So you really want to see price hold that level. But as prices come back to a prior swing point area, we can see some bottoming signals on the intraday charts. For example, the 15-minute, the 30-minute, the 60-minute, those already have confirmed roads to indicator bottom patterns. At 12 noon, you might get the same on the two-hour time frame chart. And at 2 p.m., you could get the same on the four-hour time frame chart out there. Wave 7 on the five-hour chart is going to extend itself. So just like the 30-year, the 10-year does have bottoming signals. But price is going to need to to overcome resistance levels on the ZN, uh, I would say for the September contract, that number, because it's already been tested and rejected once on a counter trend move. And you can see that out there. And that's at the 110.20 level. So I'd say peak, if price can close over 110.20, uh, we may, in fact, indeed have a bottom or a bottom that lasts for at least a couple of sessions out here in the 10 uh, year note as well as the 30 year treasury. So I hope that helps you out with regard to all of that information. If not, right back. And I'll be happy to try to uh, provide uh, whatever I wasn't able to this time around uh so again thanks for that uh let's go to our next question that has come in this is from hector and uh let's get over to that set of charts out here that set of charts going to start us with conical well oh, that's the wrong set of charts let's try this one more time uh, and the question, let's read the questions from Hector. He says, happy Thirsty Thursday. Same to you. Conical Phillips on a daily, please. What are your thoughts? And silver on a daily, if you have time. Thanks and have a great day. You do as well. Well, on Conical Phillips, it's pretty simple. Uh, Hector, you've got a confirmed TD9 count top with price consolidating with inside its daily profile. That consolidation range is between 112.42 and 115.69. All right, 116.98. Boom. Now, in order for, on a daily basis, ConocoPhillips be on its merry way to the upside, price must negate its TD9 count top. That would require a close above 118.25. If price were to close below 112.42, the bottom of that daily profile, Hector, you'd be looking to move to 110.20. That's its breakout level of support. The weekly time frame chart for ConocoPhillips has an A to B equals CD pattern. It needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. Short of that, price is... 
trading in or attempting to trade into its swing point from January 27th. In any close on a weekly basis, above 118.64 would suggest a run all the way up to that high. On the monthly time frame, ConocoPhillips is um, bullish. We'll call it bullish to neutral. It has a Rosemont to Mitigator top, but it's more neutral. Um, it's more, I said bullish, bearish to neutral, but it's more neutral than it is bearish. Why? Because the Rosemont to Mitigator top took price back to support, the support zone. It's a bullish structured profile. And on a monthly basis for Conoco Phillips, that's between 83.47 and 95.07. So that move to the downside has ended. Now what price needs to do, and it did it last month, it closed above the top of that profile. That's a bullish outcome. And if it can hold that green oscillator and change line this month as well, odds favor a run back up to the high. But that will not occur until we see the TD9 count on the daily time frame negated, which right now is just trading in a consolidation between 112.42 and 115.15. So, Hector, I hope that that helps you out with regard to Conical Phillips. You also want to take a look at SLV, and we will do that. I will go to the SLV charts, but I would prefer to go to the silver charts. So first, we'll go take a look at silver. We'll pull those up here. We'll see our eight panel set of charts. We've got monthly, weekly, daily, and then intraday time periods. On a monthly chart for silver, you can see that price is sitting at support. I'm going to try this. Let me see if I can get enough data here because it should show us a different result. Let me see what kind of data I can pull up on the September contract for the monthly time frame. Really not much. But on the monthly time, yeah, so let's just, let's, we'll, we'll pass that. On a weekly time frame, the weekly time frame shows that price is trading below its bullish structured profile out there. So that would be signaling to you and I that it wants lower price, silver that is. In the case of um, silver, the silver contract, what I don't have is any kind of A to B equals CD pattern. You might see one or what looks like one, but the problem is the retracement here. This would have to be, and, and, and really, quite frankly, you'd almost have to use the same B point and C point, the same candle for that. That's theoretically, you could use this as your B point, uh, the July 21st low. But see this this retracement up here in silver. That was oh, an, like an 85% retracement. Once you get past 0.786, it really is not an A to B equals CD pattern out there. So we don't have any kind of a pattern inside of the daily silver contract. When we go to SLV, because that only trades for six and a half hours, there we can find an A to B equals CD pattern. But on the actual silver contract, we cannot. Does that mean anything? Yeah. Well, right now we're trading below profile, and that's suggesting we could see a further move lower. With regard to the intraday charts out here, the 30 minutes got a Rosemont to indicator bottom and a price can close above 2376, we should get a further rally. That rally would take us to 2388. If the price can close above 2388, we're likely looking at a move to 2402. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. We're gonna take a look at the SLV for Hector and then Apple is what we're gonna go visit for Nancy inside the top stand. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to those SLV charts for Hector. So here we pull up the charts for the SLV. You're going to see a clearly defined A to B equals CD pattern. Again, it trades differently than the silver contract. Silver contract's the underlying instrument. The SLV takes its orders from the silver contract. So it might trade GLD. It might trade SLV. If you do, please get access to the gold contract. You don't have to trade the contract, but get access to it so that at least the patterns that you're identifying really replicate uh, what is going on inside the market. But to the SLV, you do have an A to B equals CD. Prices attain the one-to-one -one level. This would tell you that you need a bullish reversal candle to uh, confirm a bottom, a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, the next level of support, well, price is sitting at support on a monthly time frame. It's that green oscillator and change line. So what price need, if price is going to head lower, we need to see a close below 21.63. That's going to change by a few pennies. If price, and really what we really need to see is a close below 21.42. That's the top of that monthly profile. If we do see that, that is a close below 21.42, then 21.14 would be next up. And that 21.14 is the bottom of that weekly profile. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helped you out with regard to the SLB. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. And I will look forward to fielding your next question. Speaking of next questions, this next one comes in from Nancy inside the Tigers. And Nancy writes and says, Steve, Apple, if you have time, we're going to make the time. It seems to have almost completed a one-to-one -one down on your 30-minute charts. You have projected 198.18. It appears to be trying to do a weak rally intraday. Could you see what it might do over the next few days? Whoa, that's a challenge. Earnings are after the bell tonight. All right, so... Sorry to chew ice. I took a swig of water and the ice slipped through. And I don't like swallowing ice. I don't care to chew it that much, but when it gets in there and you're doing a show, not too much else to do. All right, so with regard to Apple, first let's take a look at what's going on in the daily, weekly, because they're coming out with numbers, and that's going to be perhaps more important than the 30, but I'm going to answer your 30-minute question as well. <clears throat> on a daily time frame, what we know about Apple is this has a confirmed Rosemontum indicator top. It triggered that signal back on July 19th, and it took all the way until this trading day of July 27th to generate that topping pattern, to confirm that topping pattern. Why? Because it was a bearish reversal candle. What price is doing right now, Nancy, is consolidating with inside its daily profile. What I can share with you is Apple has very strong support between 189.45 and 191.40. 
If that level of support fails after the bell or at 430, then price will target its breakout level. And that's at 18501. It would only be a close below its breakout level, Nancy, at 18501 that would trigger or signal to you and I that there is problems in paradise, paradise being Apple. On a weekly time frame chart, thus far, we have a TD9 count top with price pulling back and testing support. And support is both the top of its profile and its green oscillator and change line that's currently printed at 190 and change. 190.89 is what's printed on my screen at the moment. On a monthly time frame, there is no top. A bearish reversal candle at month's end, and it's only the 3rd of August, so we got a long time to go. That would then trigger a road momentum indicator top, with support being 184. So we've got 185.01 as a breakout level of support and 184 as a monthly oscillator and change line. Those are the really important levels out there to watch how Apple responds after the bell. If it responds poorly, does price break through those levels out there? Now, maybe it does it after the bell. Tomorrow morning could be a whole different thing when the cash market opens, so always be careful. If, however, Apple decides to trade higher, and trades above and close well, it won't close above today, but it starts trading above 197.20, the road, not to get, not the high out here that formed, the high of the bearish engulfing candle, what it engulfed. It did not engulf that uh, candle from July 19th. So the resistance level is really the high of that candle, July 27th, 197.20. If price closes above that, that'll suggest a further rally. However, we have to go back now to the weekly time frame chart. And here we see that TD9 count top, and that's where it gets us to that all-time high at 198.23. So in order for Apple to truly be on its merry way, if price closes its trade above 198.23, that would be a very bullish outcome. Now, your specific question was about the 30-minute chart as well. You're asking me, where is Apple going to go for the next couple of days? Right now, with the information that we have at hand, it's going to consolidate with inside its daily profile. I don't have any other reason to tell you something otherwise after assessing what's going on in the weekly and the monthly time frame chart. That doesn't mean that's what it's going to do after earnings are reported, but that's the only thing that I can share with you is that we've got a consolidation with inside that profile level. Now, to your 30-minute time frame chart. The 30-minute time frame chart, if I were going to draw in an A to B equals C, and I'm going to explain this to you as we go to the black background charts because there I can use my tool. I do not have the same A to B equals CD pattern that you do for the 30 minute time frame. The only one that I can see at this stage of the game is the one that I've drawn in here and that would take us down into about the 188 level. Now you may ask the question why or why is that a possible A to B equals CD? So for that, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the black background charts. So if you give me just a moment, Nancy, we'll do that and then you'll be able to see and perhaps I'll be able to share with you some something that you hadn't considered in drawing your A to B equals CD patterns. Now, A to B equals CD patterns are completely subjective, but there are sets of rules. And some of those rules, or one of those rules, and we referred to that earlier, is on that retracement, that retracement of B to C, it's got to be less than a 0.786 retracement. Once it gets above that, it's like it's making a 100% move of a move. In other words, more of a consolidation. So, as an example, right now, if you were to have chosen, and I don't know if this is what you chose or not, we'll, we'll, we may find out when we see the price come up. If you were to have chosen the high from 9.30 in the morning on July 27th is your A point, and your B point being this low out here at uh, 15.30 uh, in the afternoon on July 27th, and then we gotta find the next highest high that forms after that. It looks to me like it's this high right here, which is on August the 1st. That's gonna be the C point. And that is a 90% retracement. That would have given you 192 and change out there. But that's not really an A to B equals CD. I don't want you to, do, to use that. I'd rather you use the true A to B equals CD patterns that are out there um, for, the, uh, for, for whatever time frame. The real A to B equals CD patterns, because we know we need to at least have less than a 0.786 retracement. Let me actually get rid of this one. Let's put in the one that I had drawn in there. So again, I'm going to use that same high uh, am I going to use that same high? Yeah, I'm going to use that same high out here, which was from uh, September 20, uh, July 27th at 9.30 in the morning. And now for the B point, it's going to be either the low at the 12 noon session. That low was 191.85, 190.86. So 191.85, that would be the B point. Let's see what kind of retracement we have out here. This might not be a valid one either. 
26%. No, you've got to at least have a 0.382 retracement in order for this to truly be an A to B equals CD pattern. So what I would uh, propose is that the 30 minute time frame chart does not have an A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here. Well, what is in play, Steve? Oh, excellent question. Let's go back and look at that 30 minute time frame chart because what did form at the bottom out here is a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. And that was confirmed as we came into the 1130 session. So Nancy, if your question was, did Apple on a 30 minute basis form a bottom? It did. It was not the buy the D point pattern. It was a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. And the key level of resistance for you right now is gonna be the top of that 30 minute profile. That's at 193.26. So hope that helps you out with regard to A to B equals CDs, as well as what Apple's doing on a 30-minute basis. And then the time frames to watch for earnings after the bell tonight and tomorrow. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got those 120-minute charts up on our screen here as we close out the show. The NQ clearly above uh, at this stage here. This 120-minute time frame chart is going to complete this next bar as we uh, go off the air. So that is telling us about a change in trend. 15,490 is the next key level of resistance. If price can close above that, the rally should extend itself today. You've got the ES Mini that is trading above the top of that red oscillator and change line at 45,26. This next battle is 45,32, 45,44. The Dow is now testing that red oscillator 
and change line. The close above it, I mean, it's really right on it right now. Battles at 35.403, 35.544, 35.614. And the Russell doing the same thing, which is testing that red oscillator and change line has not gotten above it. 1973.10, 1977 and 1980.90 are the battlegrounds ahead. Let's go to the next question that had come in, and that was to take a look at, uh, and that was not it. It was tickling Amazon, and that was for someone inside the Tigers there, John C. So with regard to Amazon, they're out with earnings after the bell. Here's what we know. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top inside of Amazon that has led to just simply a sideways consolidation. It's not really providing us a clue as to how it's going to act. But has it broken down? Well, as of 11.55, it has not. It's trading with inside its bullish structure daily profile. On a weekly basis, though, you've got a TD9 count top, like many of the stocks inside the NASDAQ 100, but price is not broken broken through any level of support, you've got a consolidation between 122.23 and 133.45. I'd watch the 122.23 level to the downside. If Amazon disappoints, it could target 109.25. That's its breakout level. And on a monthly basis, you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside of profiles. A couple of questions came in very late here. I won't be able to get to all of them. One was about Disney. Where is an entry point out here? Um tough let's see you've got a swing point that price is trading into from a july 25th volume here 15 million shares so far you're pulling back with 5 million shares that's too much volume that's about similar volume out there you'd love to see a test and rejection of that swing point from july 25th that means uh pokes below 85 16 closes back above it with less than 15 million shares out there and then the next one if i can fit this in real quickly here was to take a look at billy b-i-l-i Where's a buy point? You know what? There's not enough time. We'll try to get to those. We will get to those tomorrow, as well as Roku for Lee. And just so you guys know, those uh, emails came in relatively late, mostly because of our ISP, I would guess. Folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Take care and be safe. Folks.